Hi, this is Adam from FontLab, and today we are going to talk about TransType 4 and PostScript Type 1 fonts. In 2019, Adobe announced that PostScript Type 1 fonts will stop working in Photoshop in 2021, and in January 2021, Adobe announced that Type 1 fonts will stop working in other Adobe apps in January 2023. What are Type 1 fonts? Well, Adobe introduced PostScript Type 1 fonts in 1984. That's almost 40 years ago. Type 1 was a popular font format for desktop publishing. It brought high-quality, scalable glyph outlines, but was limited in other aspects. The format was different between Mac and Windows. Each font existed in multiple files, there was no Unicode support, no support for larger glyph sets, or typographic features such as ligatures or small caps. In 1996, Microsoft and Adobe created OpenType, a much more modern font format that still works great today. When Adobe apps discontinue support for Type 1, the Type 1 fonts will not appear in the fonts menu, there will be no way to use previously installed Type 1 fonts, and existing Type 1 fonts will appear as missing fonts in the document. In short, your existing documents will break. So, what can you do? Many font foundries released Type 1 fonts over the years. The fonts often cost hundreds of dollars. Today, some, but not all, foundries offer upgrade pricing if you want to replace your Type 1 fonts with OpenType versions. So you should consult the foundry that released the Type 1 fonts. But some of the companies that made Type 1 fonts no longer exist. Some Type 1 fonts don't have OpenType versions, and some OpenType versions use different family naming than their Type 1 counterparts. Fortunately, OpenType is a superset of Type 1. If the end-user license agreement for your Type 1 fonts allows it, you can convert them to OpenType without loss of quality. TransType 4 is a universal font converter that you can use to convert Type 1 fonts into OpenType. You can retain the same family and style names, so existing documents will mostly not change. If you buy TransType 4 for just $97, you can run the app on macOS from 10.6.8 to Big Sur 11 and on Windows 7 through 10. So, how to get started? Go to fontlab.com and click on TransType 4. On the TransType 4 page, click Buy. That takes you to our FontLab store where you can buy your license for 97 US dollars. If you're an academic teacher or student, there's even a discount. When you have downloaded TransType, double-click it and install it. On the Mac, drag it to your Applications folder. On Windows, follow the installer instructions. Open TransType, get your folder with Type 1 fonts and drag them to the TransType 4 window. The TransType 4 window shows all the fonts that you will get. Every font is shown as a little square. The fonts are grouped into styling groups and into families. We will talk about them in a moment. Press Command-A or Control-A to select all fonts and choose the Export Profile. Choose OpenType PS. You may click Subfolders by Postscript and click the Convert button. Pick a folder or create one and start the conversion. TransType will convert every Type 1 font into an PostScript flavored or CFF based OpenType font. Once you have the OpenType fonts, you can install them on your operating system and all apps, including new versions of Adobe apps, will recognize them and you'll be able to use them in your existing documents and in new documents that you create. To get more info about TransType, go to help.fontlab.com and click Online Help for TransType. You will get to our TransType 4 online manual. So what about those styling groups and families? Every font belongs to a family or a typographic family. So your font menu lists families, and if you choose one family, another menu, the style menu, lets you choose the style. 
most modern applications list an arbitrary number of styles under one family. Here, for example, the Latifond family has weights from hairline to black and corresponding italics. So in total, it's 18 styles. This type of family grouping is common in Adobe apps, in many apps on macOS, and also in some apps on Windows. However, there is another way to choose families in apps, mostly in Microsoft apps and in older Windows apps. That's the bold and the italic button. So you pick a family and then you can click the B icon or the I icon or both. That gives you four combinations. Regular, if both buttons are off. Italic, if only the italic button is active. Bold, if the bold button is active. And, you guessed it, bold italic, if both are active. So quite a few of those apps, including Microsoft Office apps, they can only address or let you choose four styles per family. So open type fonts have two different naming schemes. One, the typographic family with an arbitrary list of styles. And second, a styling group, which only can hold regular, italic, bold, and bold italic. That's up to four styles, but not every styling group has to have all four members. So family names and styling groups. And that's exactly what you see in TransType. Every family is a row with the name on top. And you can see how many styles, typographic styles, are in each typographic family. Then within one family, you see multiple styling groups. And each styling group has its name on top of the bigger square and four small squares, which represent the styles. The small squares are arranged so that you can drag and drop between them and declare whether a particular style is supposed to be the regular, the italic, the bold, or the bold italic within each styling group. When you drop some Type 1 fonts, especially Mac Type 1 fonts, onto TransType, you may see that some of the small squares are red. What does that mean? Well, Mac Type 1 fonts had this unique functionality which OpenType does not support. One style could be the bold of another style, but also a style on its own. OpenType does not support this, so you have to choose whether, let's say, a bold is its own styling group, a regular within it, or whether it's a bold within the regular styling group, one or the other. So in TransType, you can click any of the red cells and press backspace to delete them. So how do I deal with this? Well, TransType has the Organize menu. From the Organize menu, when you select all fonts, choose Optimal Styling, and TransType will produce the most compact representation of the families, will try to link the styles as the italic, bold, and bold italic members of the styling groups. You can also choose build style names or build styling group names if you don't like the names quite uh, as they are. Also, you can drag and drop the cells between the styling groups and manually rename each style each styling group, or even the family. Check help.fontlab.com for more information in the TransType 4 manual. And well, that's it. Get TransType 4 today and save your Type 1 fonts from oblivion.